Hey, it's Jennifer Belladonna's Botanicals. And tonight I want to talk to you about um, overcoming and healing from religious trauma in the pursuit of your spiritual awakening. I am going to put a disclaimer and content trigger warning here. Um, I'm going to be talking about some unpleasant topics in, and unfortunately using, you know, the coded words for it, um, involving self-unaliving, SA, et cetera, and um, religious trauma, also mental health issues, other trauma, that sort of thing. If that is something you find triggering, watch another video, or at least you've been warned and know what to expect. Um, the other one is putting a disclaimer here is that I am not a medical professional. I am not a psychiatrist. I cannot advise you on anything. I am just talking about my own personal experiences. And as with all things for me, I believe, firmly believe in a holistic approach to healing. Do all the things in, you know, go to the doctor when you need to go to the doctor, take your damn meds. If you need to take your damn meds, um, you know, do Reiki, throw crystals, do whatever you need to do, do your witchcraft, all that too. Your complimentary alternative medicine, knock yourselves out. Well, maybe not literally, but all those things together form the holistic approach to your healing journey in the context of spiritual awakening. So, um, full disclosure, I've been in and out of therapy since I was about 16 years old. Um, a lot of what precipitated that was that I had two friends, um, self on a live with pew pews. This sounds so crass to say it this way, to get around shadow banning and social media, YouTube bot censorship and all of that crap. The fact that it sounds so disrespectful to say that, say it that way. Um, so I'm a little annoyed about that. But anyways, let's proceed. So I was 16. I had two friends pass from self-inflicted mm, to the head. Um, I was also a junior in Catholic school. <laughs> so I went to Catholic school, Roman Catholic from, the, uh, I think third grade till I graduated high school. Um, as I've mentioned before, I was not born Roman, Roman Catholic, Roman Catholic. I'm actually Byzantine Catholic. Uh, or Greek Catholic, not necessarily Greek or Orthodox in that. Um, it's just a quick history lesson here. After the fall of the Roman Empire, Roman Catholicism went up Western Europe. Byzantine Catholic went up like Eastern Europe into Russia and Turkey and all of that. So it's a little different. So it's a lot of times referred to as Byzantine Catholic or Byzantine Rite, um, stuff like that. So like my grandparents' church, still all in Ukrainian, you know because I'm Eastern European. I'm mostly predominantly Ukrainian, but I got the whole Carpathian swath um, covered there. Um, so a lot of us come into, let's just say, broad, use the broad term of the occult, regardless of what your, your traditions are, your beliefs, what spirits you work with, all of that. A lot of us come into alternate, unless you have, unless you were brought up in that tradition and whatnot, you know, and everyone in your family has been doing it for, you know, hundreds of years. Um, if you're breaking from the, the, usually when we talk about religious trauma, it comes from the Abrahamic faith. So um, if you're breaking from those particular religious traditions um, and they can vary, they can be very extreme and very like, you know, um, secular is, the right, is that the right word um i don't know anyways so and that can and that religious trauma can can run the gamut in a variety of ways now i had already started by about 1991 getting into the yeah this roman catholicism is some bullshit um and that was my experience of it just on what we were being taught and i in case you haven't noticed, I like to question a thing or two here and there. 
Um, I don't just, I don't just, you know, go with, well, because I said so of it all. I'm like, because I said so. Yeah, whatever. Um, if God is love, then why are we fighting wars, hating and killing, you know, all that stuff. Anyways, um, I could go off on a tangent. Um, I don't want to. So what happened when I had two friends on the line themselves is that both of them were uh, being essayed by family members and uh, other forms of abuse. And um, ended things. So this was within two weeks of each other, or two and a half weeks. And what we were told, you know, one of the one of those things this is what sticks to me i and I'm, I'm pretty sure the priest who told me this just sort of recently shuffled off this mortal coil and i'm like good it was a priest i particularly took a lot of joy in being a gigantic flaming ass pain to um, but I'm pretty sure this is the one that said it. It was basically kind of like, well, it's really sad that your friends died and all, but you know, as aside, um, self unaliving is a mortal sin. So they're rotting in hell. Um, so, you know, excuse me, I'm 16 years old. You're telling me my friends, I'm devastated. You're telling me, you're telling me as a spiritual leader, as a, as a priest, you are telling a child their friends whose lives were so bad they had no choice but to self unalive. You're telling me that that because of that to escape their the hells they were in and their pain. You're telling me they are suffering in hell because that is a mortal sin. Fuck all the way off with that. This was at this point in time twenty. Two years ago, three, 30, no, sorry, 32 years ago. I'm bad at math. This was 32 years ago. This was 1992. I am still livid about it. That is what religious trauma is like. It has taken me a very long time to at least get to the point where I can kind of talk about it without wanting to put my fist through a wall um, <clears throat> or being so triggered that I can't function. So religious trauma, that's what started me. I was angry for decades. Decades I was angry about this. I and and I've went full on like just devout atheist. I'm like there's no God, F God, F the church, hope it all fucking crumbles and whatnot. F anyone who believes in this bullshit, F Jesus, F Mary, F all this crap, get all, you know, because of the trauma I endured. That's only one piece of it. It's, it, it's, it's the constantly being told, well, you know, thinking about unaliving someone's just as bad as, as doing it, according to, you know, the church. I'm like, is it that? Is it though? Is it the same thing? I don't think so. And having questions that could never be answered. And it was just like the pain and, and, and the trauma that all those things caused me as a child, child. There's no excuse for it. And I was angry. I hated the church with every fiber of my being because I was so angry. I internalized this. And you know how I healed the most when it comes to religious trauma is through my occult practices. Funny that being a weirdo, satanic witchy poo brought me closer to the church, helped me find my own self-acceptance helped me find 
peace. I don't know, maybe forgiveness, but it helped me to heal from that trauma. Um, I don't know who needs to hear this, but um, you are not your trauma. And if someone is telling you those things like that, you have every right. I don't care how old you are, whatnot. That priest should have been fired. And, and, and you, you know, well, considering, considering um, some of the more dubious things Roman Catholic priests were doing, um, I guess it's probably small, small potatoes, but you know, we, 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 we saw how they like to brush certain things under the carpet and I guess that's okay, but you know, anywho. It took me, a, it, it took me until like, say, uh, probably the past four years of my life to be able to make peace with that, to be able to maneuver through my spiritual awakening, through my healing, to be able to make peace with it's just let's put it in there the christian pantheon because it's kind of what it is it's it's really it's it's no different but what has been happening to me and it's very freaking confusing is i've been getting the jesus and lucifer buddy cop show of spiritual experiences because I was, which I was not prepared for. I've, 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 I've run into the Virgin, Virgin Mary before in, usually in underworld workings, like sort of almost like a dual face with Santa Morte, which was interesting. That was a few years ago, but um, I actually have a Virgin Mary statue on my dark goddess altar. Uh, <laughs> but it was revealed to me that that he that religious trauma healing is part of this spiritual awakening process it just opens more doors and gates for you to access the full spiritual realm and i don't know how to explain all the experiences i have i tend to think of any named spirit at, in in terms of a divine intelligence, to borrow the term from S. Conley's books, she uses that one, divine intelligences, and that goes across the board. Um, man gives the man says, God is God, or this is a God, this is a goddess, or oops, wait, this ancient God is now a demon, because, of course, the word demonizing exists for a reason. There, most of what we know as demons are ancient goddesses, ancient pre-Christian goddesses and gods that got turned into demons by, uh, through the whisper down the alley um, of churchiness and Christianity. So because dark spirits exist in other religions, um, whether they're demons or whatnot, there's... An inherent duality versus non-duality doesn't really apply here, but it's like nothing is in the all good, all evil thing. It's it's a spectrum like anything else. So yes. So whether we're dealing with archetypes. So what I was thinking about today was um when it comes to it, it, it was, it, 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 it's all of the, you know, Jesus as a white guy paintings and stuff like that. Well, you know, the, the expression, well, God made us in the in image and likeness. Well, of course, you know, your, your relationship with God is going to, in your image and likeness is going to mirror that someone else, you know, it's not to say that God or Jesus can't be black or Hispanic or an alien or anything else based on your experiences. So it's, there's also been some interesting things I've been reading lately, sidebar on the alien part um, of gods and aliens and stuff that I've been reading and various occult lore and stuff. So anyways, sidebar over. Um, now I completely forgot where I was, but 
So whether they're archetypes, divine intelligences, or, you know, a, a connection through the collective unconscious in which we all kind of have the dream of the world and these archetypal divine intelligences. So um, if I am in Greece and I want a goddess of love, well, I can work with the Greek goddess of love. Or, you know, maybe in the passage of time, I'm in Rome. So I work with the Roman version of the goddess of love. Or maybe I work with Astarte or, you know, any, any number of deities that kind of fall. Because if you, if you kind of line everything up, there's a lot of similarities. Like, okay, let's, let's take this pantheon and this pantheon. Like the Greco-Roman one lines up so perfectly. Um, was it intentional? I don't know. But um, it's, it's just a different version of the same thing. So, which is well, since it kind of makes the whole who's sky daddy is better argument a little bit null and void. I'm like, it's the sky daddy. Um, anyways, spoiler alert. <laughs> but so part of overcoming this religious trauma has been, and I realized for me, the religious trauma was less with the religi religion per se. It was with the individuals and how they taught and interpreted that religion. And that is key in a lot of things. That's not just Roman Catholicism. Having a terrible teacher or someone who is so literal, stuck in dogma, there's no room for interpretation. The tradition is the tradition. You cannot break from it. Um, those are things that need to be questioned and I am a very non-traditional person across the board. If I find a tradition and I can change it, I probably will. Um, and hey, that's my own, and, and I do that with my own cultural, you know, heritage as well. Like, I'm sorry, I don't have the culinary prowess and technical skills to roll holipkis and kipples the way my grandmother and her mothers and great and great grandmothers and all that did. Um, I don't have the time for it. And also a lot of joint inflammation, so doesn't necessarily work. So it is okay to break from traditions or to change them over time because, you know, even in my lifetime, the world is not the same as it was in the 70s or in the 80s or in the 90s or in the early 2000s or the 2010s or even four years ago. Jesus fuck. The entire world that I knew really changed four years ago. And I'm sure I am not alone in that. So it's okay to break from tradition. It is okay. Um, people will tell you it's not, but there's things that have to change and adapt for our needs change. Like I've been watching, um, I've seen a few of the younger um, witchy creators. A lot of them are look, are, are sort of, exploring, you know, veiling, and, and by veiling, it's mostly like a headscarf or a bandana kind of like wrap thing as part of their, their, their spirit work and their practices as a, a sign of reverence and stuff like that. I think that's great. I don't think I could do regular um, veiling like that or head wrapping and stuff like that because I have sensory processing issues. It would drive me freaking crazy. Sometimes I would probably be okay. Other times I'd be like, get this thing the F off of me. Also, I have very silky hair that like nothing, like it, it's just, if I put a hairpin in, it would probably fall out um, or a hair clip or something like that. So not everything works for everybody. So if, if there was a mandate that, okay, well, all of us now have to wear a headdress or not a headdress, like a veiling whatever head wrap or scarf or something like that i would be miserable it would be torture for me it wouldn't be a sign of reverence it would be something unpleasant it would be like there are times to be honest you know how i can tell when i need to wash my hair because, I mean, with the coloring and all the stuff I've done to it, I literally wash my hair like once a week. But you know what my, my body signal is to wash my hair? 
it will get, I'll be like, I will become aware of the fact that my hair needs to be washed. My scalp will feel itchy. I'll be like, okay, I can feel like my hair feels oily here. And it does not matter what the time of day it is. I have gotten up at 4.30 in the morning to shower and gone straight back to bed because I could not sleep because my hair was bothering me because it needed to be washed. Not, not like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a shower in the morning or, or something like that. No, I need to take a shower right now to take care of this. So taking something like that into consideration when we're looking at changing and evolving through practice and tradition, the problem with a lot of mainstream religions is it wants to adhere to traditions that are thousands of years old and, and impractical for modern times. Or like, hey, maybe we don't, you know, throw virgins into volcanoes anymore to appease the gods kind of thing. You know, I just read, I just went through, read a, it was all right. I just read a whole audiobook on the history of, of human, what's the word I'm looking for? Sacrifice in different cultural contexts throughout the whole of history and stuff, that, which was actually very interesting. Um, didn't have the greatest reviews, but I can honestly tell most of those reviews were written by people who, who only read the introduction. <laughs> Anyways, but things change for a reason, and that is okay. I feel at peace now having processed through my religious trauma. And, you know, and you and how you can process through that is up to you. I mean, you might want to go a traditional therapeutic model of talk therapy. You might want to do something more targeted like EMDR, which is amazing for trauma therapy. You know, you might want to do psychedelic medicine, um, ketamine or microdosing psilocybin or, or LSD or something like that. So those things might work for you. Um, it might be something that you just work on through meditation and shadow work. Um, I've done a little bit of all of it, to be honest. I've done, like I said, I've been in and out of therapy since um, 1992. Um, I've been in reg, well, actually I've been on, on a therapy pause for about the past year. Oh, interesting. But yeah, I've mostly been, I've been very steadily doing a lot of therapy since either 2010 or 2011 pretty regular. And if I'm not physically in therapy, I'm always working on something. So I may not be going to a therapist every month, week, whatever, twice a month, whatever, but I'm doing my ketamine treatments and things like that. I do have, um, you know, I have the clinician I work with. I have my, my ketamine guide and there's integration circles, which would be kind of like on the group therapy sort of thing. So I do get the healing, it's, it's, it's a process that, and I probably will get back into therapy again at some point in time. Um, I just haven't, I've just had a lot of other things going on. Um, and not for nothing, finding a good therapist is really hard. And I'm sorry, but you're probably going to be paying about 150 to $200 out of pocket per session to find it when you do find a good one, because most aren't covered under insurance and good luck with the ones that are. <laughs> I've, I've very rarely had ones that were covered by insurance. Um, or maybe you get like six sessions per year. I'm like, well, that's great. Me as <laughs> Anywho, diverged on, a, but I digress because I've diverged down a tangent. But if you've watched my channel before, you know how I roll. Um, so what are my takeaways here on overcoming religious trauma? It's not something you want to force because you know, having to go through a lot of those things again and to make peace with something that was a constant source of feeling at war with the world um, or that part of the world that was a source of such pain, of such like, I need comfort. And that was the comfort you gave me. I need comfort at 16 for you to tell me 
just pat me on the head, tell me everything's okay. I think maybe their hope in telling people, you know, and telling us that suicide is a mortal sin and you're going to hell if you kill, if you unalive yourself, um, was a way of maybe hopefully preventing it from, ha from, uh, from anyone else, um, doing that. But that kind of sucked. That's a really shitty way to kind of like teach a preventative lesson. Um, and I was not in a good mental state myself. I mean, I always wore a lot of bracelets and stuff to cover up, you know, wrist things. So, um, like I said, if you've made it this far, hopefully this wasn't too triggering for you. Um, I just, and I, I'm leaving out the, the hella triggering parts of it because, hey, here, here's, here's a little sidebar. Um, my first friend who, who used a pew pew, um, it didn't exit and she didn't pass immediately. So, um, yeah, those things, we carry these things with us. They're part of us. And I really feel like now that I've integrated that part, that shadow aspect of myself that trauma and healed from that, I feel like I'm in a better place. I have no historical love loss for the church. So it is kind of what it is there. And the way things are going on the Christo, Christo fasci front in America is a, another whole ass topic. But um, honestly, at this point, I can, I can honestly say I feel sad for a lot of these like devout Christians because they have no actual relationship with God or any of the pantheon of Christianity. They have no relationship with it. And that they think they do. Um, they're taking, you know, and trying to literally, tra you know, apply, you know, whatever from the Bible to justify bullshit, terrible behavior. And I, I feel sad. Like going to church was nothing to me, even as a child. Like, it was just like, stand up, sit down, say some words, sing some song, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, I felt nothing. There was nothing that was a connection to God in church. I could go to church every day, and it would be nothing different than taking a shit. So, but the, the relationship now that I've developed with the spirit world, I feel so sad for people. And especially, ha, to my Christian haters. Um, Oh, that are always telling me I'm going to hell and, you know, I should accept Jesus. I'm like, hey, Jesus shows up for me and I'm a weirdo, you know, satanic witchy poo. So tells you something about Jesus that you're obviously probably not getting. Take my glasses off and blink even more. So if Jesus can show up and be like buddy cop drama with a, you know, whatever, satanic witchy poo. <laughs> you might have some wrong ideas and interpretations about that Jesus H Christ guy. Just saying. So. And I see the opposite end of it. And because believe me, I was there myself. I see a lot of very vehement, vehemently um, opposition to working with like the angelic realm, angels, archangels, anything in the, sort of, I wouldn't say Judeo-Christian pantheon, but more in the Christian pantheon, because there is a lot from Judaism that does um, kind of come over into the magic realm. If you're looking at the, the Kabbalistic practices and the cliff off, I mean, Lilith comes out of um, that area of that of Judaism as well. So um, yeah. And not for nothing, apparently, according to my ancestry um, DNA test, I am 0.2% Ashkenazi Jewish. So, um, wasn't raised it, but <laughs> I found that fascinating. Anyways, I'm going to end here because I've been going for about half an hour, but I just wanted to give uh, this... I took a little break from making content um, at the beginning of the year. So um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. I have so much more coming down the pike for the Spiritual Awakening series. Some of it I just need to flesh out more. Some of it I need to do a little bit of research on a little better. And 
I am really excited about this series and thank you for watching. Um, be sure to check out the other videos. I'll link the playlist below. Um, don't forget to click like, sub like, like, subscribe, click smash the notification bell, follow us on social media, sign up for our e-news so you know all the cool shit we're doing. Anyways, love you all. Bye.